Stretching five and a half kilometers into the Arabian Gulf lies the most audacious engineering project the world has ever seen. Palm Jumeirah is so vast it can be seen from space. Built only from sand and rock, threatened by earthquakes, violent storms and erosion from the sea, it's remarkable that Palm Jumeirah exists at all. This is a mega structure they thought could never be built. To put Dubai on the map, he's already built one of the most luxurious hotels in the world, the Burj Al Arab. But now, the Crown Prince's big idea is mass tourism. Dubai seems the perfect spot. It offers sun almost every day of the year, glorious beaches and azure seas. Five million tourists visit here annually. Now they want to triple this to 15 million. But there's a problem. The coastline is a mere 72 kilometers long. Not enough space for all these extra people. But how do you make your coastline longer? The Crown Prince's plan is to build a massive island and he wants it done by 2006. What better for a paradise island than the shape of a palm tree? Five and a half kilometers across, it increases the coastline by a whopping 56 kilometers. But no one has ever built an island this size and shape before. To blend in with its surroundings, the island must be made entirely from natural materials. The palm-shaped island will only be made from sand, 94 million cubic meters of it. All that protects this from the sea will be a breakwater, 5.5 million cubic meters of rock. Together, there's enough sand and rock to build a two and a half meter high wall circling the entire world. January 2002, six months after work began, a large section of breakwater stands proud four and a half kilometers out at sea. For everyone involved, it's an exciting time as the dream becomes reality. The engineers are constantly working out how to tame nature's forces. The erosion problem is under control. But the threat to the project doesn't just come from the surface of the sea. They now face a new dilemma beneath the waves. How has this awesome megastructure impacted on the ecology of the area? Environmentalists have been convinced the building of this megastructure would destroy local marine life, ruining one of its greatest selling points, the azure seas it sits in. For the developers, it's a problem they're constantly watching. Every six weeks, divers check the waters. Fish and corals are monitored and measured. But fears that construction may have destroyed this underwater world appear unfounded so far. In fact, this megastructure seems to be having the opposite effect. Not only is the marine life unaffected by dredges removing a meter thick layer of sand, but the breakwater has created shelter for fish and is attracting new species into the area. Now the palm developers are turning this to their advantage. They plan to build the largest artificial reef in the world. In June 2004, two jet fighter planes were dropped to the seafloor for people to dive on. There are even plans to sink a red London double-decker bus. I'll be measuring pH, dissolved oxygen, and in addition to water temperature. Those are the three major parameters we have for environmental oceanographic monitoring. These uh, miniature cameras are great because <clears throat> we'll be actually using several of them on the bottom. I have a mask which is a full face mask allowing me to talk and I'll be mounting one of the cameras on the side of the mask. Being wide angle it'll give me an entire view. And so fed up to the surface then will be a broad view picture plus a more detailed picture of the bottom. And we'll couple that in with two surface cameras, one on instrumentation and the second one on a surface observer to give us relative position. So now we've got a quad or four color images on one frame of video. And we can correlate this with audio then and get a great idea of uh, the area that we have been surveying.
great for archival purposes and also great to extract the data from to continue on our baseline studies here at the Palm. Even before the Palm is finished, the Crown Prince is inspired by its success. Now he wants two more islands, each bigger than the last. Palm Jebel Ali is one year into construction. It's twice the size of the first, nearly eight kilometers in diameter. This is designed to be a tranquil island with 29 luxury hotels and an inner ring of water homes that spell out an Arabic poem scribed by the Crown Prince himself. Now it's billed as the eighth wonder of the world, the largest ever artificial island off Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. Now details of the Palms two billion dollar twin have been revealed and it's going to be half as big again. The fronds of the palms stretch across the sea, adding an extra 60 kilometers of new ocean front to the Arabian Gulf. It's creating a huge marine habitat and reef environment. The sunlight is exactly what the little fish love. Then down below, what we do right underneath that, we start seeing the barnacles. Marine biologists say algae and barnacles are already well developed, attracting a rich variety of underwater life. We've spotted a pod of dolphin, 30 dolphin around the area. We've seen spotted uh, stingrays, garfish, even some spotted groupers. So this, this indeed is a marine habitat worth looking at. A kilometer away at a press conference, live pictures of the reef were beamed back using a microwave link, including an underwater interview. Project developers aim to have a major international dive center at the Palm, as these virtual reality pictures show. We have carefully selected the location of the island to ensure that there will be no damages. In fact, it would be adding a lot of features to the uh, marine and reef and other uh, ecological and environmental aspects of the location. The second Palm Island will be 50% bigger than the first, with the first two stages of development costing $2 billion. Part of the island has been designed in the shape of Arabic calligraphy. When seen from the air, it spells out an Arabic poem written by Dubai's Crown Prince, Sheikh Mohammed. In keeping with Dubai's passion for racing, the translation reads, Take wisdom from the wise, not everyone who rides is a jockey. Lisa Crefield, NBC News. But just when they thought resources were stretched to the limit, the Crown Prince has the most outrageous idea of them all. To make Dubai the number one tourist destination, he wants to build the world. Four kilometers out at sea, hundreds of small islands are being constructed. Seen from the air, these islands will take the shape of the continents of the world. That's an even more complicated structure to build than the palm. This is not one island, but 300. And each one is different, varying in size from five acres to 20. The deadline for these exclusive private islands is 2007. Arizona, Wyoming, France and Australia are all up for sale. They cost anything from 6 to 36 million dollars. And that's before anything is built on them. From the start of the project, the Sheikh was aware of the environmentalists' concerns about their local ecology. At its conception, it was argued that dredging the sea floor to create this colossal megastructure would cause damage to sea life and coral beds in the area. Construction went ahead, but using natural materials to limit the pollution rather than toxic materials like concrete and steel. Marine scientist Professor Joe Valensic has been brought in from California to monitor the development. The typical marine environment before the world was built is nothing more than a sandy area. And this sandy area continually shifts around, moved by waves and currents. It was very, very difficult for any animals to survive because of these shifting conditions. By building the World Island Breakwater, the marine life is given a new stable environment. The caves, the crevices, the small openings are the ideal environment for fish. It gives them a tremendous amount of protection. The breakwater has become a 25-kilometer artificial reef, a haven for marine life. Dives are made regularly to keep an eye on the increasing fish stocks. Where there was once a barren desert seabed, now the amount of sea life is hundreds of times greater than before. 
the life that we have seen here far exceeds what we had predicted. In this, this makes me extremely happy. Environmental engineers recently discovered something else they hope will radically improve the marine environment. Diving by the Palm Island, they notice new seagrasses growing in the area. If they can help it grow on the world islands, the effect on the marine life could be staggering. For me, it was very exciting to see seagrass in some of the channels here at the world. Now, what it provides in is not only shelter and food, but it oxygenates the water, something that is critical for marine life. Seagrass is a great thing to have growing on your building site. It's a natural way to keep the environment healthy. Confounding its critics, incredibly, the building of this project has benefited the entire area. The Sheikh's decision to use rock and sand has paid off. The Palm Island put Dubai on the map. Now the world puts the map on Dubai. But have the developers gone too far? Will the demand for property keep up with the escalating build? Will the bubble burst? So far, two of the Palm Islands are completely sold out. A third of the world has been snapped up. Mega structures are the latest craze. To top all plans, in January 2005, they launched the Dubai Waterfront. This claw-shaped landmass won't just stretch far out to sea. It will also create 75 kilometers of waterfront, stretching into the desert. Together, all these megastructures will extend the coastline of Dubai from 72 kilometers to a whopping 1,500, a 2,118% increase. Meanwhile, the first Palms construction team continues to meet the deadline of 2008. But the island stands here in defiance of nature, proof that engineers can and will continually push the boundaries of engineering technology. The Palm Island is truly an awesome megastructure.